Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. I recently released a whole series of videos on antenna matching networks, more commonly known as antenna tuners. One of the comments brought up the thought that I should do a video on how the antenna tuner makes the impedance transformation. And I thought to myself, you know, this would be a good thing to explain. But this isn't just about antenna tuners. There are many, many, many applications for impedance matching all through RF electronics. So rather than just focusing on one application, this is the first video in a series in which I will help you design your own matching networks for whatever application that you might have. And yes, this is not out of your reach you can do this thing. In this video series, I will walk you through two different methods of accomplishing this task. This video is the introductory foundations for impedance matching in general and the two different methods of accomplishing the task. I will give you a basic understanding of the constituent parts of the full color smith chart that we will need to accomplish this task for the first and easiest method. I have placed links to the basic impedance only Smith chart and to the full color Smith chart in the description for you. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's start with a general introduction to impedance matching. Well, the object of proper impedance matching is to deliver the maximum amount of power to the load from the source. If we consider the case of pure resistive elements and pure resistive source and load resistances, the magic occurs when the load resistance is equal to the source resistance. So if you look at this chart, I have a fixed source resistance and I'm changing the load resistance. Now the load resistance is plotted on the horizontal axis and the power delivered to the load is on the vertical axis. Notice that the power delivered to the load has its peak when the load resistance is equal to the source resistance. Now this leads us to think that the same thing applies when we're talking about complex source and load impedances. A complex impedance includes both resistive and reactive elements. So let's consider an example where our source impedance is equal to 100 plus J50. We might think that the best possible power transfer is to be had with a load impedance of 100 plus J50 also. With this configuration, we would deliver 22.4 watts to the load. The complex conjugate of the complex impedance is found simply by changing the sign of the reactive part from positive to negative or vice versa. So the complex conjugate of our 100 plus J50 is 100 minus J50. So what happens if we use this as our load? We deliver 28 watts to the load. This is a full 25% more power. So if our goal is to deliver the maximum power to the load, then our load impedance needs to be the complex conjugate of the source impedance when dealing with complex impedances. So the output side of the impedance matching network needs to present the complex conjugate of the load impedance in order to deliver the maximum power to the load. If the load impedance is 100 plus J50, then the output side of the impedance matching network needs to be 100 minus J50. So how do we make this happen? Well, there are two ways to do simple single stage impedance matching. You can do it the easy way using a complete Smith chart. Oh no, not the Smith chart. Or you can do it with some equations. Designing an impedance matching circuit with a Smith chart 
is no more difficult than plotting a course from one location to another on a map. We just follow the lines from one impedance to the next, do a little simple division, some multiplication, maybe a little subtraction here and there, done. Furthermore, we can explore several paths to get the same results using the Smith chart. There is, after all, more than one route between any two points. Doing the same task using the equations requires us to do some circuit analysis and some harder math to get solutions. True, we do not need to get mesmerized by all the lines on the Smith chart, but in the end, it is most definitely more work. And then, there are those occasions where multi-stage impedance matching is required. This is way, way, way easier with a Smith chart. Now, with this said, most people's eyes glaze over when they first look at the Smith chart. It gets even worse when you look at the complete color Smith chart. But if we familiarize ourselves with it one small step at a time, then it quickly stops being the tool of hypnotists and starts being our preferred tool for designing impedance matching circuits. To that end, let's tiptoe into the world of the Smith chart in preparation for designing impedance matching circuits. Well, I'm going to start with the basic impedance-only Smith chart as it is far less intimidating. To begin with, we have to remember that all of the values as shown in the Smith chart are normalized values. So what is a normalized value? This is where we divide the impedance value by the characteristic system impedance, most often 50 ohms. Now, for what we're doing here, it actually doesn't matter what value we choose. Well, let me give you an example. We have an impedance of 100 plus J50 and a system impedance of 50 ohms. This gives us a normalized impedance of 100 plus J50 divided by 50, which comes out to be 2 plus J1. Traditionally, normalized values are represented by lowercase letters. While an impedance is represented by the uppercase Z, the normalized version is represented by the lowercase Z. So why do they normalize the impedance values? They do this so the Smith chart can be used for any system impedance as opposed to being tied to a particular impedance value. The very center of the Smith chart is the system impedance of 1 plus J0. Now, let's turn our attention to the mind-numbing, eyes-bugging out lines. There are two sets of lines. The first set of lines are the real circles whose circumferences are tied to the right side of the Smith chart. You can see their values along the equator of the Smith chart here. These circles are for plotting the purely resistive or real part of the impedance. Here's a very important point. Pay close attention to this and remember this. As we move around, any given resistance circle, the resistance does not change. The reactance will change, but the resistance does not. And this is why they are often referred to as constant resistance circles. The real part of our example impedance will be plotted on the 2.0 circle as shown here. The second set of lines are actually arcs which are part of circles whose centers are located off the page. These are the lines for the reactive or imaginary parts of the impedance. You can see their values along the edge of the Smith chart. All of the values above the equator are positive values and inductive reactants. All of the values below the equator are negative values and capacitive. Here we see the positive and negative 1.0 arcs. The reactive portion of our impedance will be plotted above the equator because it is positive and thus inductive. Now, let's put these two things together. 
where the resistance circle and the reactance arc meet for any given impedance is the place where the impedance is plotted on the Smith chart. We can see that spot for our example impedance right here. Now that we have this down for the basic impedance only Smith chart, let's move to the complete color Smith chart. All of the same principles apply. Well, we just got done looking at the basic impedance only Smith chart, which is still here, represented in all of the red lines. So really, there's nothing new here as far as impedance is concerned. But you ask, what are all of the blue lines? You can see the similarity as a mirrored image of the red impedance lines. This is the admittance side of the chart. Admittance is equal to 1 divided by the impedance and is represented by the letter Y. The real part of admittance is conductance. Conductance is traditionally represented by the uppercase G and the normalized value the lowercase g. You can see here the blue circles, which are the constant conductance circles. We plot normalized conductance values on these the same way we plotted normalized resistance on the resistance circles. The lower values are on the right, and the higher values are on the left as displayed along the equator. This is the opposite of the impedance side of the Smith chart. Like the resistance circles, as we move around any given conductance circle, the conductance does not change. Thus, they are called constant conductance circles. But what about the imaginary or reactive part of the picture? The reactive portion of admittance is susceptance, which is traditionally represented by the uppercase B. Normalized values are represented by the lowercase b. These are the blue arcs. Like with the impedance side of the Smith chart, everything above the equator is inductive, and everything below the equator is capacitive, with one very important difference. The values for susceptance above the equator are negative, and the values below the equator are positive. And you say, well, why is that? This is because the susceptance value is equal to minus 1 divided by the reactance value. So how does this work with our example impedance of 100 plus J50? The admittance equals 1 divided by the impedance. So we have 1 divided by 100 plus J50, which gives us a value of 0 0.008 minus 0 0.004J. Now, did you notice the change in the sign of the reactive portion between the impedance and the admittance? We plot the admittance values on the Smith chart in the same way we plotted the impedance values, except we use the blue lines to do it. Well, with this introduction under our belts, we're ready to dive into designing impedance matching networks using the complete color Smith chart. And that, my friends, is exactly what I will be covering in my next video. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, to loots.